Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to do another video in our GNU Cache series, and this might be the final one, at least it's the final one I have on my list to do, just because we've covered enough that I think anybody who is interested in using GNU Cache for accounting should be able to get everything figured out. But this, what we're gonna to do today, is kind of that that ultimate report that that customers or the, not the customers for the the company summary screen that you find in QuickBooks that's very useful, and so we're going to talk specifically about custom reports, and this is really the part where GNU Cache has a little bit of that frustration where it seems a little bit clunky, but utilizing your custom reports you can actually build those screens like we want to see. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to our desktop build and we'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so here we are and uh, of course, if there's any bugs, um, you know, then uh, there might be bugs. Uh, I just upgraded the entire system to Linux Mint 19.2 as part of the video demonstrating how to do that. We should be okay, but uh, we'll see what happens with it. Um, I did poke around here a little bit, and while well, the summary, I think, which one was it? There's, I think the customer summary was originally throwing an error. Um, this one here, it's either pulling from wrong dates because I haven't come into this account for a little while, or um, it's pulling the wrong accounts, I'm not sure. So um, just going in and selecting all of these is what pulled this in. And then of course I need to set my accounting period. So let's go start of this year and end of this year and I thought that's what we needed to do but uh, we're not getting any sales data I am not completely sure why that is this is the only thing that I'm seeing uh, so far I actually did get information in there a few moments ago when I was experimenting that's the only bug that I found but we're not going to use that one anyway so um, and I'm not sure if that's because this is a flat pack or there's something goofy in my file or something didn't update right. I'm not sure. I'll test this on my live system uh, just to see if it's working there. But we're not going to need that one today. And I didn't notice any other bugs, so we will proceed. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom screen that's going to show us all the different reports that we might want to see. So, of course, if you come into your reports... You can see the variety of different things. Here's our, ba you know, our balance sheets, general journal, liability charts, liability um, pie charts, things like this. Um, of course, we'd need to select our data under our budgets. I think we did our budget. Let's see if any data shows up under our budgets. Okay, so this is kind of where the only spot we have a marketing budget there showed up. So um, the other reports you might want to see. Now, what I usually do is I see a customer reports. Of course, I would need to select a customer. So let's just go ahead. Eh, let me just go ahead and hit select and search for a customer. Let's apply that. So here we have a customer report like this. We might want to see under income and expense. We might want to see our expense either a chart or a pie chart uh, we can see an income chart or actually we can see an entire um, uh, there should be one chart in here which has incomes and expenses there we go income and expense so of course your difference is your expense chart this is just going to show you a chart of your expenses and under our income chart this is just going to show us our income but if we grab a income and expense chart this is going to show us our incomes our expenses and our net profits so I like using this one but we might want to see charts now, of course it's very clunky to do that every single time and so we're not going to do that but what we are going to do instead is under our reports you can go down to sample and custom and create a custom multi-column report so what this is going to do is this is going to give you a place where you can build your own screen. So all of those things that you like from your company summary screen where you can move things around and add charts and add summaries and tables and stuff like that, you can actually do this in here. So we're gonna go up and hit our report options and then multi-column view, um, we'll just rename this um, company summary. 
And then with that renamed as company summary, we're just gonna go ahead and keep everything here. Let's actually go, let's just go with three columns here since we have a big widescreen computer. And now what we're going to do is this is a list of all of those different reports that we might have. So maybe you only have a few different customers and you can actually easily keep track of your individual customer stuff. So we wanna do not the customer summary, but the customer report. So we're gonna go ahead and add a customer report and we will go ahead and I think I have two of these. So let's just go ahead and add two customer reports. All right. So we can always go in here and pull this up. So we're going to go into our one custom report and we're going to edit the report options. And down here, we're going to select one of our customers. So let's go with our first customer first. Oh. Select that one. There you go apply this of course any of the options that you'd like to do so you might want to do uh, start of this year end of this year so that the report always stays the same um, and we can rename this let's just call this our first customer all right spreadsheets just keep that where it is you can also display your columns so our title is going to have that displayed our type we kind of got that figured out credits debits amounts uh, I don't need due dates. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and apply this. So it's nice and condensed and let's just go ahead and do this. So total due here, uh, current amounts. So these are the amounts that we've made in. So uh, 400, so of course the total due. So this will kind of tell you if the customer owes any money or not. And you can get a general view here of uh, of what you um, what you uh, pulled in. I thought there was a way also where we can indicate just uh, how much how much we've actually received. All right. Okay, so that's the receivable account. All right. So now that report's done. We're going to do the same over here. Only this time we're going to select our other one. So just click the select there. Search for this guy. We're going to go with another one. Select him. Again, just change it back, start of the year, end of this year, another customer, apply that. And again, let's just go ahead and knock this down until it's about what the other one looks like. Looks like I left out one of them. I'm not sure which one I left out. Let's just go ahead and edit report options over here as well. We'll just make these two the same. Looks like date is the other one I had out. So apply that and close this. All right, so now we have a report where we have these two reports listed here. Let's go back into our contents. Now what we can do is we should be able to move these guys around. I gotta remember exactly how I move them around. So row one, column one. Um, so we're going to, let's just go ahead and add a chart. So let's go with a, um, we're gonna look for the income and expense bar chart. So we're gonna add this one, apply that. All right. So now we're going to edit our options here. We want to be able to see this guy a little bit bigger. So again, we're going to go start of this year, end of this year. You just make these whatever you want them to be. And then here is your, uh, here is your um, sizes. So if I want to make it a certain size, so let's just make it um, 900. So that's going to push those ones out a little bit. So let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's go with a 600 and let's, whoa, not 100, 600, thank you. And let's go with a, about a 500 height. And I like that a little bit bigger. Let's go, with, let's try 700. All right. So under your accounts, you just pick the accounts that you would like displayed in there. The defaults are pretty good. We can show income and expense, or we can show just the net profits if you like. We can show a table as well, which is going to give us the, the table. I don't find that particularly useful if I have the chart option. And I think I can name that um, 
I can name that exactly what it is. All right, so now we have our income chart. We have our customer report. So I can see my two customers over here. I can see very quickly if either of them owe any money. And I can kind of eyeball the amount of money that I made. I'll look for a way that we can actually see the total amount. I think the customer summary will give me that information. Um, so, of course, if you want to adjust any of the other contents, you can just go ahead and create. Um, let's see if we can get the customer summary working. Of course, let's move this guy down. I want to see if I can figure out how in the world I was able to get, get the information on there before. There we are. There's our basic information. All right. So now uh, we have our basic information over here. So I can see very quickly at a glance how much money I made from each of the customers. And then now we can just go in and keep on adding the things that are useful. Um, there's average balance sheet. Let's move this guy down to the bottom. So this is the average balance of your individual accounts. Again, let's make this about the same size as the other one was. Was that 700? I think we did 700 by 500. Is that what we did? Hmm. Oh, uh, I need to go with pixels, not percent. All right. There's this by 500 and then you can show the table you can show the plot there's the average there's the profit gain loss so let's just go with the profit okay so this is basically the the net profit that we made here's your average All right, and then your accounts. So this is basically just taking all of our assets and all minus all of our liabilities. So it's adding your assets minus your liabilities to give you a uh, a uh, amount of your your budget. Let's see, that's going. So this is adding cumulatively to the end of the accounting budget, and that's actually normal. Though what this one's going to do because it's going to average out everything to the end of the year. Let's go ahead and change this. Um, Start of this year, end of this year, apply. All right. All right. And let's move things around a little bit. So I want to move this guy up. That way my two charts are over here. My customer summary is right down under my customer reports. So then you can add all of the individual reports that you need to add to make everything work. Now here is where we uh, turn this into a good system is we're going to save report configuration. Again, it's called company summary, so we're going to close that. So now, anytime you come into your books, you can go ahead and do all of your adding your invoices, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you want to see that, come down to reports, save report configurations, double click on your customer summary, and everything with all of the settings and options you've already picked are already loaded. So you don't have to go back through and reset the customers, reset the dates, reset everything based on pulling down the reports. So basically what you're doing here is you're going to be going into your reports line and inside of your reports, you want to go through, figure out which reports you need to have, which ones are those that you like to look on on a regular basis, and then come down into your master save configuration report and you can build out your screen. You can make it as big or as small as you would like. You can edit your individual options and basically view whatever exactly it is that you need to view, including all of your charts, all of your graphs. Um, you can make any adjustments that you want. I thought that it was possible to get rid of the, um, the addresses and dates and stuff. That might actually be something that we can do on the style sheets. Um, I can't remember for sure though. Let me just mess around with the style sheets on this. Does not appear as though my style sheets are going to do much with this one. Yep. So we might actually, at least for now, be stuck with the the address information, which you might find useful, you might not find useful. I don't personally. 
Um, I dig into the customer to get that information. But at least now I can see a customer summary. Where's my money? You know, how much money have I made? How much am I making per customer? I can see individual customer reports. Of course, if you have a ton of customers, you wouldn't do this specifically. Uh, but for me, since I set up my, quote, customers as the various locations I get author royalties and incomes from, it does make sense for me to see this or at least see the customer summary so I can see. In fact, I think the customer summary is more useful for me. I do not know of a way to get this as a bar chart. If anybody can figure that out, let me know. I would like that. But as far as everything else, um, and, and I, this feels like I'm missing something. I know mine on my production account for, for this. Actually, I have a lot of different reports here that are all very useful. But you can, of course, uh, you can add to this at any time. So you can add another report. And then once you add another report, you can just go back up here, resave the configuration. And when you're inside of here, if you actually need to get rid of any of these, like this one here was one of the more old test ones, just come over here to the trash can and delete it. So you can create a new one, you know, customer summary. You can do a customer summary update and you can delete it or you can you know, come in, uh, load it up. If you need to change the name of it, ooh, not that button. If you need to change the name of it, you just come up here and change the name of it up here. Um, so those are the various things that you can do. So uh, let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see in the GNU Cache tutorial series. Uh, for now, this is going to be the last one because this is actually just kind of that final thing, that final icing that makes GNU Cache really work well where you can save all of your reports, you can get the setup exactly the way you like it, you can see where all your income's coming in, where it's going out, you can check those expense reports. This is the type of view that I like to see, that I like to look at. The one thing I really wanted out of a QuickBooks type option, and we actually have it, you just need to manually build it rather than having something that's pre-built for you. Um, then just go ahead and give it a save and then you can access that anytime that you need to. So let me know any other things you'd like to know about GNU Cache in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.